Celery and Python are match made in heaven. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. Let's get started. To start this, I have the whole setup for running Redis locally with Docker. All you have to do is get the Git link from the description and then set this up. So let's see what is there in this Docker Compose file. First, I need a Redis server running in my background. So I've taken the default Redis image and then use that in the very basic setup. Next, Redis needs Postgres to run it to save the nature of your task. Again, we are taking everything from the default Postgres image and then running it in the background. Next, I want to have a Celery worker, which is run using this command. You don't have to know the specifics of it yet. Uh, we will come back to this later. I'm also attaching my local, uh, whatever setup, the files I have as a volume. If you don't know Docker, don't worry, just run this commands for now. And then over a period of time, you can pick up what each of this is doing. And to use this and to see how this is working, we need a simple basic Python server running. And we are going to use fast API for that. So this is the uh, setup to build a Docker image locally and then run that fast API application. So few things to note here. I have given API dot colon app, which means my fast API app is going to be in that file. And then I have given in Celery task dot app, which means my Celery app is going to be living in that file. So for first step, let's write the Celery app. Here I have my task dot pi. Here I'm going to initialize my Celery app and then run some task. For now, we are going to do something very, very basic. To do this, we have to instantiate the Celery app. Let's start there. From Celery, um, since I already installed everything in my local, import Celery. I also have my GitHub Copilot in, so that is a winner. And on top of that, I want to initialize this Celery with Redis. So for that, I'm going to load up some environment variables for which I need a few more files. And those are from .n, import Python, load.n, yeah. And then let's load the lo local environments. And this is how you set up the Celery app. Initialize the class Celery with some tasks and send the broker URL and the backend URL. How does this look? Let's look at the env file. Since we are running it locally, like all of all the Redis and everything is running locally, I am referring it to the service name, which you can find here, which is the container name Redis experiment. And then you can just mention that in the env file. From the env file, we will be reading it into the task. So that's initialization. Now, how do you write a task? Again, we have a decorator, app.task, and then to the app.task, you write the function. That's pretty much all you need for a auxiliary task to be running. That is really all. To test this, we need some kind of an API or something to actually give it a visualization. So for that, what we can do is we'll write a small fast API endpoint so that we can visualize it. So for that, from fast API, import fast API app equal to fast API, again, app.get. This will give us a hello endpoint so that we can test things. And then I'm going to have two endpoints. One is to initiate a task and another is to text check the result of the task. So for that app.get of task slash add, this will call our add task. And what this should do is it should import the add from the task, from task import add. And here we're going to call add dot delay. One thing to notice is since this is add and this is also add, there's going to be a conflict. So I'm going to name this as add task and add task dot delay of x comma y so when you delay a task what happens is it is you're triggering the task to be run in the background and then to this you respond with the key task id this is going to give you a task id next i have to find the given the task id i have to find the result right for that what i'm going to do is um at app.get task slash status and to this i'm going to pass the task id to check the status of a task in celery we have something called as async result let's import that what we're going to do is uh, async result has something called as ready or not so to async result you pass the task id and check whether it's ready or not and whether it's ready or not you return that in a result task underscore id is this task id comma result colon result so that is our whole coding process we have one celery task and then two apis one is to trigger it and another is to find the status of it 
Let's see all of this in working right now. To see all of this in working, we have to run our survey. So Docker Compose app, NIF and NIF and build. What this does is, um, when you run it for the first time, this is going to take some time because it has to pull Redis image and it has to pull the Celery image and all of that. Give it some time. Once you have the application running, you will have a bunch of these commands. This C thing tells you that Celery is kind of up and running. And you can see that it's using the Redis experiment image. And then I have some errors over here. And that's because I haven't installed, like imported it from the right place. I think result, I think then that, yeah. So that works. So you shouldn't see any errors in the terminal. So that is our setup. If I go back to Docker Mapos and go all the way to the server, my server is running at 8,000 and I marked the portal to 8,000. So let's go try this application in the browser. So here's my browser and here's me attempting to hit the 8000 endpoint and here's my hello world now let's trigger the add task so to trigger the add task we already have the api endpoint for that and i also typed it before so that i don't have to fiddle around much so add x and y great and nothing is found and that's something that really happens a lot. Let's see what's going on. Task slash add, X and Y have to pass. All of that is great. I hit the API and it says 404 not found. And that's because I haven't had a trialing slash before. That's very important because that's what adds to the API. So let's try that. And then we have the classic internal server error. And that's because we are just passing the whole task object. We need just the ID of it. So that is the second mistake I've done here. So after fixing those two here i have a task id so if i take this id and pass it to tasks the result and then task id as i told you i have typed something before now what task slash result oh now i changed it to status let's actually make it result it doesn't really matter task slash result it's going to hit the api and give us whether the result is true or not so what if it gives you always true how do you actually know it's working because you know it's look okay let's try something else let's try x x x i like breaking things it's giving us false uh, which means the task is whether complete or incomplete we don't know right so it's giving false we know it's working but if i give a task id that i know is working and how do i test that um let's try the add again but in this time what we're going to do is we're going to go to task um we're going to add a timer to it import time and we're going to sleep this task for 30 seconds and what happens is this task is not complete for 30 seconds so we'll have the time to see it going from not complete to complete so let's do that so i've had it a little sleep now let's hit this task we get the task id so for the first 30 seconds when i try the result it's going to be uh it will be changed to result right so it's going to be false for the first 30 seconds and then after 30 seconds it's going to become true so let's give it 30 seconds and then hit it again we can impatiently try it quite a few times but until 30 seconds nothing is going to happen um on the logs end you can see something like this this is succeeded and took about 30.07 seconds. And that's when you know, you know that task has completed. See, the task has become true. And that's something very, very basic that you can do with Celery. So whatever you want to do in the background, you can um, create a Celery task, call it from fast API, and then you can check the status of it. This is how you build asynchronous APIs with fast API and Celery. But that's just not it. You can do a lot more parallel processing in Celery. And that's what we will cover in the upcoming videos. See you soon. Bye.